loop, die, repeat. Loop Hero's mantra as it sucks you into a world of forgotten memories. Developed by Team Four Quarters, whose previous work has been Please Don't Touch Anything, and published by none other than Devolver Digital, Loop Hero seeks to innovate on the auto-battler genre, melding it with the roguelike and RPG mechanics as you develop your camp, build a deck of cards, and design your very own dungeon path your hero will take throughout. All this while telling a story about a world of memories in crisis of being forgotten. And it's one I'm certain that will stay in the minds of many, with the already successful release of the title boasting more than half a million sales on Steam. Without further ado, let's take a look at Loop Hero. The story of Loop Hero follows one such fateful character who seems to have the knack of coming back to life after every time he dies. When he comes back, he arrives in a camp that just so happens to be the only thing he and the last bastion of humanity remember each time. However, when our hero heads back onto the endless looped pathway in the Eternal Abyss, everything has been forgotten, and it's up to him to remember the world around him, piece by very piece. Throughout, you'll encounter creatures and bosses that will have discussions with you when you first engage them in combat, and typically when you defeat them as well. Bosses usually giving up to three unique banters on three separate runs. It's through this that the world builds itself as a mysterious wonder, and although it seems rather dark and lonely, you tend to run across a fairly kooky bunch of individuals as you continue to expand the campsite all with fun personalities that typically give off quite humorous exchanges with the hero, each offering you a slice of detailed information on your surroundings. The story recognizes the absurdity of running a loop over and over, and the idea of having an excuse to respawn after each failed attempt. But it all works and makes for a fairly fun experience, albeit not the most memorable. That being said, if players would like to expand upon their lore of the world, there is a vast encyclopedia explaining each and every enemy, tile, item, and even furnishing the game has on offer, which you can tell the development team must have had a lot of fun with. Don't expect too many twists or turns to wow the mind, but it's still an enjoyable read overall. Harkening back to the days of old Final Fantasy titles in the combat screens and other such classics of the time, with unique artwork on the various tiles throughout the world, Loop Hero seeks to find its place, fitting in with a dark and moody atmosphere that happens to also have a fairly thumping soundtrack. Of course, that also is extremely enjoyable to listen to, and Many of the tracks have frequently been stuck in my mind after having looped for hours on end. However, with the limited number of tracks in the game, if certain runs go on for over an hour, you're bound to hear the same tracks over and over. Not a deal breaker, but just be forewarned. There's no voice acting in the game, but the sound effects for when text goes across the screen change to acclimate to the character speaking. This is especially a nice touch when you start engaging with bosses that tend to have some fairly interesting things to say. Combat and sound effects are noticeably chirpy and crunchy that add a nice feel to the whole experience whenever you place down tiles or watch your character battle it out with some baddies. Overall, the aesthetic of the world is really unique and quite wonderful, and I really got lost in it for hours on end. As mentioned earlier, Loop Hero melds that of auto-battling with RPG systems, card building, map creation, and even campsite construction. The mechanics overall are quite simple. Watch as your hero walks around the randomly generated loop, 
wait for them to dispatch an enemy, earn cards and gear, equip the loot as desired, and if you get cards, place the tiles as needed. As time progresses, there's a bar that fills up to determine when the new day begins. Tiles take a certain number of days to perform an action, such as summoning a creature for you to fight, or even just activating perks, such as how much health you gain back at the dawn of a new day. It's up to the player in terms of where to place the tiles, what cards to bring with them on the journey, as they are limited to a maximum of 12 cards, which is later upgraded to 15, and what skills they should focus on for their character. As the player upgrades their camp with new buildings by gathering materials they receive while out on an expedition, they will be able to unlock new abilities, equipment, cards, and supplies for future runs, thus making every new run that much easier to succeed. For example, at the beginning of the game, you start each expedition with nothing. However, if you create the smithy in the camp, then you'll start with gear designed for the warrior class. If you upgrade the smithy further, you unlock a card that you can place in the game, and all classes start with their own unique gear. Later, you'll be able to play up to three different classes, all with their unique abilities. The warrior for countering and lifesteal, the rogue for fast attacks and big critical damage, and lastly, the necromancer, a personal favorite of mine that summons an army of the dead to defeat his foes for him. There are a total of four acts in the game, all save for Act 4, limit how much resources the player can take back home to the camp. If the player dies, they can only bring back 30% of their resources, or if they leave whilst not on the campsite tile, they'll bring back 60%. However, if they happen to be on the camp tile, they can leave with all of their resources intact. This in turn forces the player to make a big decision. Should they leave and keep everything, or stay and risk it all for more? On top of this, as you place down more tiles and complete additional loops, a meter is filling up slowly. This indicates when the boss is going to arrive. Each act has their own boss, with Act 4 being a bit more special, not to mention difficult. You only fight the boss at the end of a loop, so it's a tactical decision as to whether or not you should spend a few more cards to spawn them early, or to push forward and gather more loot before the inevitable battle. There are five types of cards you can use in your deck, and each require you hold a minimum amount, save for gold cards. These cards consist of road tiles, adjacent road tiles, field cards, and special cards that offer unique bonuses when placed in certain location. Lastly, gold cards, which are the rarest of the bunch, and only one of those can be brought with you upon starting an expedition or obtained by defeating ghosts. These bonuses would be something along the lines of an additional gear slot, or having enemies be weaker near the gold card, and stronger as your hero is further away from the median. On top of these various cards, there's also adjacency bonuses depending on what cards go next to what. For example, a meadow becomes a bountiful meadow if placed next to any other tile that isn't the same type, offering an additional point of healing per day. There are a wide variety of adjacency bonuses in the game that can wildly alter the outcome of a run. However, after playing for over 40 hours, I will state that I believe rivers and thickets are a bit too overpowered, as I found them to be unbelievably strong, increasing my character's attack speed by over 400% using these two tiles alone. You'll see in a lot of my late game footage on screen, that I don't deviate from this as it's undeniably one of the most devastating setups you can get for endless runs. Yes, I forgot to mention that there are also endless runs in the game. Once you defeat the act boss, then you can keep going for as long as you'd like. My longest run being three hours, only for me to stop the run as I didn't feel like continuing, although I'm sure I could have gone for dozens of more loops. You see, the most unfortunate thing about Loop Hero is once the act boss is defeated and you're in endless mode, there really isn't a whole lot more to do. Once the whole map has been filled in, you're simply just looking for very minor stat bonuses or combinations on the pieces of gear you receive. These bonuses will most likely be every one in a hundred gear drops, and it can all become a blur after a while. 
Although starting an expedition is fun and exciting, the enjoyment tends to really die out when all you're doing is staring at your gear, hoping for a single item to drop so you can bump up a stat by a percent or two. The same can be said for the campsite. Once you have unlocked and upgraded everything, all that's left to do is to try your hand at crafting as much supplies as possible. Supplies are essentially furniture that you give your residents and store in warehouses that give you an edge on your next expedition. These can range from more health points when you cross the campsite tile, additional damage to the boss, or specific creatures such as undead, or even offer you a better chance at getting rare gear when defeating enemies. Along with this system, you have alchemy, and that lets you deconstruct all resources into a dust that can be spent to create any other resource. So, if you're ever hurting for a specific item, you can just craft it. My biggest gripe with this system is simply that you can't break down more than one resource at a time. After a single run of Act 4, you can have hundreds of logs, food, and books to deconstruct. My poor finger felt like it wanted to fall off after spamming the deconstruct button so many times just so I could craft a few supply items. But that is just a small gripe, and every system and mechanic is well thought out overall. But Endgame is definitely lacking in both depth and challenge. In conclusion, Loop Hero offers a very unique experience that can't really be found anywhere else. It does an incredible job of taking bits and pieces from other genres and throwing them all into a well thought out and cohesive world. The story is lighthearted, with no major twists, but there is a breadth of lore to dig into for those seeking such enlightenment. The music is great, albeit not enough to hold over long endless runs, and speaking of those endless runs and the endgame itself, it just doesn't quite hold the attention as one would hope. That being said, Loop Hero still managed to be greatly engaging for the 40 plus hours I spent in it. For the incredibly reasonable price on offer, I can easily look past the lack of endgame and fully embrace it as a welcome addition to my library. Loop Hero gets a 4 out of 5. Thank you very much for watching my review. It's great to finally be back and working on these projects, as although it's very time consuming, writing and editing these is quite an enjoyable experience for me. Not sure what I'll be working on next, but I hope that you'll be looking forward to it in my next review. You can subscribe here on YouTube for more videos, follow me on Twitter for updates, and lastly, let me know if you've tried Loop Hero or anything similar and let me know what you think of those. I'm Akamane101, and I'll see you all next time.